Greetings, brothers and sisters. It's your brother, son, in Esperance, or as some of you may know me as the podcast man. Happy, happy new year. We made it 2024. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, we truly, truly, truly got to give God thanks for making it another year, brothers and sisters. We cannot take that for granted even a little bit. You know, I'm truly grateful that he's allowed me to see 2024 for I know I don't deserve any of God's mercy, brothers and sisters. You know, even if there's a little tiny, little tiny bit of mercy that God can give, I don't even deserve that much, brothers and sisters. So I'm truly grateful that God has brought me and my family through to another year. I'm hoping for nothing but blessings. And, and you know, one thing people ask, Brother Sandin, what is your goal? What is, what is it, what, what, what you want for the new year? For me, my goal is no matter what success I'm going to obtain, I want to continue to be with God. God has to continue to be first in my life. That's, that's always the goal. And I, I don't want it to change either, brothers and sisters. So keep me and my family in prayer as I do the same for you. Uh, let's not forget, brothers and sisters, keep the apostle and his family in prayer. Uh, keep uh, 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 the faithful ministers and their family in prayers as well. Let's not forget to keep one another in prayers too. The end of year dedication was, like you had to be there. Like you, you just had to, I've never in my life witnessed something like that before ever here Thursday. First time I've been me personally, first time where the overflow was already filled up uh, and Friday, of course, the same thing Saturday, you had some showing up to service 8 AM ready suited. I seen brothers with their suits and ties and everything service starts at four o'clock. 8 a. I've never seen something like that before in my life. Now, you already know. You already know Sunday was wild. 5 o'clock, 5.30 in the morning. Oh, right. oh God. Behind you. I, 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 you can't make this stuff up. You cannot. I'm talking about a lot of a lot of saints. Not like a 1, 2, 5, 5.30 in the morning, brothers and sisters. You know, but truly give God thanks. Um, for for all, you know, for making it this far. It's been a mighty long way, of course, for those that have been in, in it so long down the line. And to be able to finally witness the dedication of the upper, to, uh, upper auditorium, it, it was, you know, really, it was beautiful. It was beautiful, brothers and sisters. So I'm praying that y'all can make it to the youth convocation. Come out. You know, we're going to have a lot of good stuff for y'all. You know, the seminars are going to be able to be back up. Uh, I, I believe even past PJ is going to be, you know, uh, um, running some seminars as well for the young ones and so forth. So come out and enjoy, let's enjoy one another as company, you know, fellowship and all that wonderful stuff. Now, I'm going to get out the way, brothers and sisters. Oh, for updates for the Athletic Podcast, yes, don't worry, the face-to-face -face interviews, they're coming soon. You know, I'm just, I'm being patient, so bear with me. You know, I don't want to zam, zam, zam the matter. And then it just, I come, I do the face-to-face -face and it's just nonsense. You understand, brothers and sisters? So it's it's coming though. I'm telling you, it's coming. Just be patient. Relax. Tranquilo. All right? But anyway, stay tuned for the announcement. Stay tuned uh, for the announcement via, uh, for the Athletic Podcast. First Church. For First Church, you can go on the Instagram, Facebook, all that wonderful stuff. Or the truthofgod.com website where you can see all the information updates. Where baptisms will be performed. Where, you know, uh, um, the church will be traveling throughout the year. So, you know, check those out. Um, but anyways, that's going to be enough for me, brothers and sisters. We are going to get our testimony of, you know, our sister today. You know, um, this testimony now, it's a testimony of. Uh, apparently, we're not ready for this testimony. This, this, this is a different type of testimony, brothers and sisters. So stay tuned and, and you know, listen up to the testimony. We're going to be having our dear sister. Sister Patty Richardson. Uh, I don't. I don't even know if it's out of Philly, if it's out of Delmar. Sister Patty, where are you? Where are you from? Delmar Temple location. Delmar, Delmar, <laughs> Del. But you're born. You're born in Delmar as well. No, actually, I was born in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Oh, okay. So we got North Carolina, aka Delmar, 
in the Zoom yes. platform. Greetings, greetings. <laughs> How are you doing this evening, sis? I'm doing wonderful in yourself. Um, I'm hanging in. I'm giving God thanks. You know, I'm, yes, I'm, yes. I'm grateful to make it another year, 2024. And yeah. to just, you know, now I'm getting a, another testimony moreover. I'm truly grateful um, for it and stuff. But, you know, I, I've done enough of the talking already and so <laughs> forth and stuff. It's time to get our sister, Patty Richardson, to give her testimony. On how God brought her out of the world and into his church. Sister Patty, the Zoom is yours. Okay. <laughs> tell us, sis. No questions. How did God... okay. Oh, you we get it right into we get it right into tell us. Okay, get right into it. How, how well, did how did how um... did how did God bring you out of the world? You know, give us your background, you know, how you grew up and, and all that wonderful stuff. Okay, a little bit about my background is I was not born and raised in the truth. Um my I was brought up in the church of Christ. Um, but um, um, so my dad and my mom did root us up in church, but not in the whole truth. Mm -hmm. I did not come to the knowledge of truth until I was approximately around um, nine or 10. Um, when we, cause I'm a military baby. So mm -hmm. um, my dad, once he retired, we would move to back to their hometown, Virginia beach. And um, my uncle uh, Ella Freeman, then um, he was apostolic. We in turn went to apostolic faith. And that's where I learned a little bit of the truth because the pastor I was underneath, Ella Freeman, which was my father's uncle, he always said he was not called and sent. He said he just was holding the church together um, because the pastor had left. He was a deacon. So he said he could only give us milk. So what he knew then, he came from underneath of Bishop Johnson. So what he was teaching us is what all he knew from the teaching of Bishop Johnson to give to us. He would always say, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not called and sent. I'm just giving y'all meat, um, milk of what I know. So that's as far as he could go with us. So I was baptized in um, Jesus Christ's name back then um, in apostolic faith that I come from. It was baptized in Jesus Christ's name. Um, and um very strict. You know, I come from uh, Janelle, them, we come from uh, that black, white, um, <laughs> navy blue, <laughs> um, gray, dark gray, no prints, no colors, cotton stockings, thick stockings. Um, we couldn't listen to the radio, couldn't watch TV. So it was very strict. Mm -hmm. Um, when I was being raised up into the knowledge of the truth. Um, so, um, but I gave God my all when I was younger because I was filled with the Holy Ghost at the age of 15. Wow. Um, I was baptized at the age of 11. And because of our upbringing from my mom then, but my mom then always taught us about the holidays, there's no such thing as holidays, no such thing as Santa Claus. And my mom would always tell us, I'm your Santa Claus. So the foundation of God was brought up to us, but I didn't really know, know God until I came to um, apostolic faith. Um, and um, I, that's when I was taught that Jesus and God was one. Um, but um, it was rough growing up in um holiness apostolic faith it was very rough um i was bullied um i used to get my hat snatched off my head at school people would just bump into me it was just a rough back then it wasn't really too many young people in the truth mm -hmm. um i really didn't meet um any young people in apostolic faith until um, maybe around my, when I was 12 or 13, that's when I met Janelle and, you know, Tiffany and all the Fletchers. That's when I met them because we came, we, our churches, um, became one because it was, we was underneath of Ella Goodman and Ella Freeman. So apostolic faith. And, um, it was just really rough because for me at my temple location in North of Virginia, it was just me and one other 
little sister, but I was, I was really rooted in, I wanted to know God. Um, I was a repenting little girl. Anything I did wrong, if I said shut up or anything, I was always going to the altar and my pastor, he would always say, sis, you're okay. You're young. You're, you're going to make a mistake. You don't have to always come before the church. You don't have to do that. And, but I just had a repentant heart from a young age and with all the bullying and what I was going through, the only person I could go to was God. And that was so such a young age, 11 years old. Th that was my only friend because no one understood me. No one knew my walk. But God and I, when I was bullied and when I was teased and people would talk about me, you know, as a young girl, all I could say to them is what was taught to instilled in me is I said, Father, forgive them for they know not know. They don't know I'm your child. Forgive them. And that's that was my mentality. Mm. You know, when I came to a apostolic faith is just giving, saying, God, forgive me Um forgiving them and I would say what would Jesus do you know that's that was my thinking at that young age what would Jesus do okay um these kids is doing this and they're doing this what would Jesus do what would Jesus say and that's how I lived and at the age of 15 um Ella Freeman who I learned then was my uncle my great uncle um his sister came into the truth um came into the church because I'm going to say, let me put it this way. I didn't come to the full knowledge of truth with Pastor Jennings until 2005. So the reason why I say when I come into the truth, because that is really the foundation that my pastor then gave us was just a little bit. Pastor added on to it, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. That yes. makes sense yes. to you. And um, so my aunt. She was in a Baptist church and my great aunt and she um, came to the, um, you know, where we was having service and God had filled her with the Holy Ghost. And my pastor, because he was so real and honest with God saying that he wasn't called and sent, he would, he told her, oh, you're going to, that's going to be your seat. Well, when she came on truly after she was, she came, she did, that was her seat. She left Baptist and came over. She was my example of a true person of God. I looked up to her, even though she was older and, um, she was with us for two years. She died after two years, but I remember her saying to me, she had stopped talking. She had cancer. She had stopped talking and I was tearing and just fighting the devil with the, you know, the enemies all around me going to school battling. And, um, I leaned over to her a week before, I think it was a week before she died. I believe Lord, you know, um, I leaned over to her and I told her I loved her. And you know what she told me? She said, baby, you're going to receive the Holy Ghost. And I looked at her and I'm like, she talked, you know, because she didn't say, say anything. Mm -hmm. A week after she died on October uh, the 3rd, the 4th, excuse me, I received the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And um, and that was just. Thank you, Lord. Bruh, I got so much in me because I can't just, I just can't thank God enough because of all that I've been through. He is still with me. You know what I'm saying? And I thank God that he filled me and blessed me back then when I was filled with the Holy Ghost. No other young person had received the Holy Ghost. You know, back, you know, Ella Freeman, he would always tell us about Bishop Johnson and back in the day where when they would tarry and they would pray, they said the minute that you put your foot out of your car on the grounds that the power of God would hit you. Said so that's how powerful the prayers of the saints was back then. Mm -hmm. And they hadn't heard of a young person in a long time receiving the Holy Ghost. So when I received the Holy Ghost, it was like they everybody was like, wow. But I was like, thank you, Lord, because I needed him. He was my comforter. Mm -hmm. I had him in me now to where, you know, I was like, Oh, can't nobody touch me. But that was the wrong attitude, bro, that I had. It was like I was overzealous and um, 
I can say this for, for sure, and I, and I hope and I pray that this could be a testimony to the ones when you get the Holy Ghost, sit there and let God lead you. Don't, don't get in your mind, oh, you got the Holy Ghost now, everything is okay. Oh, you got God and he's in you. Like Pastor said, sometimes God will step aside. He'll step aside when you're not allowing him to, you know, lead you and guide you. Mm -hmm. So at that point, when I was 15 and I received the Holy Ghost, I became overzealous and I was like, oh, nobody can bother me. Oh, and I was walking around and and I was just so amped, like, you know, you can't touch me till one day, bro. A Jehovah Witness came to the door. Man, they picked me alive. I thought because I had the Holy Ghost and that I knew God and God was in me that, hey, they can't, can't nobody touch me. I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. These Jehovah Witness people picked me alive. And at that moment, I became converted back to submissive to God because I was like, then he let me know that you didn't allow me to lead you and guide you. Mm -hmm. You didn't allow me to walk with you. You didn't allow me to continue to shape and mold you into the person I want you to be. Mm -hmm. You ran before me. That's mm -hmm. what I was feeling in my spirit. Mm -hmm. And he brought me back to a humble state to where I went before the church again and I repented because I'm, I want to tell anybody when you receive the Holy Ghost, don't think you all you you all this and that because you're not. You still have to be submissive to God. Okay. And um that just brought me more peace and comfort. Um and I understood the importance to allow God to use me and guide me. And from that day forward. I just stepped back and I allowed God to continue to order my footsteps. It was rough. It seems like, um, I don't know if anybody else experienced it, but it's like when you get the Holy Ghost, to me in my experience, man, that devil came full force. And I was fasting and praying in school. Like I said, it was just a rough time with the bullying and stuff in school, but I made it through mm -hmm. because back then, like I said, we didn't have young people. Mm -hmm. Now to fast forward a little bit in my lifetime and growing up in truth and what I knew knew then to be truth, I have experienced a lot of things, um, especially when I allow God to lead me and guide me, because until I met pastor in 2005, um, I heard him when I was at age 15, but a lot of people back then was telling me from what I heard from the church that Sister Janelle was going to and different ones when we were together is Bishop Johnson was the only one that was right. Mm -hmm. So, and they said, there's a man called Gino Jennings. Um, he's saying, claiming to be an apostle and um, he's not an apostle. He's trying to be like Bishop Johnson. You can even listen to his voice. So one day I was listening to my radio Back then, I was able to, my father allowed me then to get a radio as I got older. And I turned to a station. I heard this voice. And that was my first time. I said, hey, does sound like Bishop Johnson. Is that Pastor Gino Genesis? That's who they talking to? But he was preaching truth to me. But because of who I, the people I was around, it was like it just faded out of me. So I was like, okay, he does sound like Bishop Johnson, but the man's preaching truth. I never bucked against it, but I just couldn't understand why people would say only Bishop Johnson is the only man of God, you know, the only man of God that's called and sent. So um, hearing pastor, I kind of brought, I kind of wish that I kept that radio on because 
from the time between the time of me meeting Pastor, generally meeting him, I had a lot of trials and tribulations. Um, my father, um, bless his rest his soul, um, military really messed him up, and the enemy used used him in ways that I felt bad because his mind wasn't right, and um, I've seen spirits. Um, God, I I believe is from God. I've seen wicked spirits. I've seen, I could see people's aura of um, goodness of them. It was like when I received the Holy Ghost, my whole, something about my whole total being, when I looked at individuals, I knew whether they were good or whether they were bad, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, you could feel. Mm -hmm. And I've actually seen stuff um, until I met Pastor Jennings, I thought I was crazy because, um, and my family used to, I used to be called crazy because um, I don't know who it was and I don't want to say any scriptures, but the woman that the, the brother, I don't know if it was Saul, went to her to call a spirit out. Um, and... I could see spirits and I thought I was crazy and I really didn't understand that scripture until I came to the truth of knowledge of pastor. And that's when I realized, I said, I'm not crazy. When pastor broke this down one day, I said, I'm not crazy. This really stuff really happens to individuals. And, um, so God continued to use me and guide me throughout school um, I could see things. Um, it got to a point where I could foresee things, not saying I'm a prophetess or nothing like I'm not saying that, mm -hmm. but I could see things happen before they happen. And um, I it got to a point where I told the Lord, do not allow me to see my own death. To keep it short and brief on my experience with the spirit and where where it was leading me um and i would see so much and things would happen to people around me and i would just pray and i say lord i, I pray forgive me i I don't want nothing to happen to individuals, especially ones that were, you do your children no harm. You don't do God kid children's wrong and you get by with it. I've actually seen this transpired in my life and it was scary to me until I understood it from the teaching of pastor. So um, when I met Janelle them, um, I married their cousin. So that's how we entwine as family. Yeah. So at the age of um, 21, 22 is where I went over into when I met Janelle them. First when I was younger, but we became family then. Mm -hmm. And when I married, I went to the church that we all came from out underneath. Um, it was rough. It was right back to cotton stockings, the navy blue, the white. It was just, it was not the atmosphere that I thought I would never convert back to. I then met um, Bobby Richardson, who was mother, um, mother, um, she was with Mother Stacker and brother, um, sister, Mother Heyman, brother Heyman, them. She was with them. I married her husband's nephew. So we were entwined. Sherry Richardson, um, we were entwined. We were family. And then um, Elder Fletcher um, was uh, his wife, Mother um, Fletcher. She is my husband's um, cousin, first cousin. Mm -hmm. So in 2005, to fast forward, 2005 is when... I, Bobby, mom, Bobby invited me to church mm -hmm. in Del Mar and, um, I went, um, because I was going through so much 
in life. Um, and I was in a dark place. And so she invited me to church. And so I was like, okay, I'm going. But before then, me, my husband and his cousin and Tiffany, um, Tiffany was like, Pat, come over oh, before I met mom, um, went with mom Bobby to Delmar. So my first time actually meeting pastor, which was shocking to me because in 2022, pastor remember me and me. And he reminded me that I met you in um, Norfolk. And no, yeah, Salisbury State. It was Salisbury, the Civic Center. And I was like, God, Pastor's got a good memory, you know? <laughs> and so that's when I first met him. And I was like, this man is preaching truth. This, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I have to move away from where I'm at. I, I can't stay there no longer. I just can't. They're not, this is not right. So when I went to Del Mar, I um, enjoyed it. I was welcomed with open arms, Mother Heyman, Brother Heyman, um, Mother Flint, and all of them, the older saints, um, some passed on, um, were there. And it was just this welcoming feeling. And I started attending in 2005, First Church. I became a member of First Church in 2005, December 2005. At first, I was still a little shaky because of what everybody had told me about past. Oh, he's not a pastor. He's not a man of God. So I was like, okay, Newport News. We That was my first convocation, Newport News, um, Virginia. And we had a sister's meeting. And in this sister's meeting, <laughs> there was some, you know, disagreement I'm gonna say disagreement going on and um then we went up to the um upper level and mother um Jennings she had a sisterhood meeting with all of us and um we talked about sisterhood things and questions and stuff that arise brother let me tell you something God is real Pastor came and he preached that night. And this is when God showed me the man of God. And you probably have heard it. You might hear it in other testimonies. But pastor came on. He preached. But before he started preaching, he said, I, I, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you, sister, something. My mother didn't tell me. And Mother Haman didn't tell me. He said, God had me sitting in my hotel room with my ears in the sisterhood meeting. He repeated everything that transpired in that meeting. And then what we talked about in the sisterhood meeting with Mother Jennings, he repeated that. I said, I looked around. I said, this is not real. This is not real. This is crazy. <laughs> he was like, and he said, this is what happened. And such and such. And I was like, oh Leo. my God. Go ahead. Go uh, ahead. No, no, I, I'm that's, 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 I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> I told my mother, I told my mother, I said, that man is real. That is a man of God. Because he said, I was my ears. And I was like, he knew who said what. He knew what the disagreement. And I, from that day forward, bro, I haven't stopped believing that that man is not a man of God. And I will follow him with the great help of God until the end. And he has even talked to me on levels that even made me know that he was a man of God. Um, have I always been perfect? No. Um, he, he constantly has to get on me about things. But at the end of the day, I try my hardest 
to be a servant of God and take what he gives me and strive with it and hold on to it. And um, from that day forward, I knew that he was a man of God. And I'm geared to fast forward because I'm geared to share my testimony. Mm -hmm. Um, and 2016, no, let me fast forward. Let me back up. And I was going through a rough patch. Like I said, when mom Bobby, um, introduced me to first church and I came aboard and things were transpiring in my life because I was still dealing with, you know, you know, you having a, a companion at a different church than you are, it's a lot. Even though we believe the same thing, but the one thing that we don't, it, that is a hindrance there is to know that the man of God is apostle. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. <laughs> And to know that he's preaching the truth. So while while you and were going I was to just, first church, your husband yes. was still going to okay. He's still okay. yes, uh, and well, he's still today. It, 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 he still is today. Oh, wow. Okay. So wow. I just ask everybody just to pray because okay. I know um, Pastor could really use him because he is. Um, he said he is a minister, um, and he preaches and things like that, and knows the Bible, knows the Word, and I just pray for him that he will come to the knowledge of truth, of knowing that this is a man of God. Yeah. It's come. It stems from years of people just saying no, 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 you know. So, and that's. But I thank God for bringing me out, mm -hmm. and um, I was just going through a rough patch because I was like, just like it's like a tag of war, and um, I was just ready to, I was just tired. You know, I had three young babies and I was just tired. And um, in 2012, I'm going to say this, I was geared to just walk away and just sit home and um, move away. I was just geared to move. I was in a dark place. And mom, Bobby, and sister Vonda, Tendo, she was an encouragement. It was just, they were encouraging me, but I was just like, had to set mind because I was in a dark place and I couldn't pull myself out. But I knew from teaching, if you just hold on, I didn't testify. I kept going. I would listen to testimonies, but my mind was like, mm. no, I can't do this, mm. but I know I have to hold on to God. I got to. Um, so pastor came down for a convention and he said, I want, I said, okay, I was an usher at Del Mar. And he said, I want all the ushers to come. Mother Heyman had passed away. Mother Heyman was in charge of every, all of the sisterhood and everything. So um, pastor came um, to Del Mar for the convention. Um, I believe it was the convention or anniversary. It's either or, but he was down. And he um, said, I want to see all the ushers, brothers and sisters. So he had a big usher meeting. And Mind you, I was like, December, tax time, I'm going to get taxes, and I'm just going to walk away from everything. Mm -hmm. Leave, just walk away. And he said, I'm here to appoint offices. Um, he said, I'm going to make a national sisterhood usher and a national brotherhood usher. And um, he expressed to us, you know, with my Mother Heyman, the church is growing and he needed to establish this. And I'm sitting in the front and um, he said, you, sis. Now, mind you, in my mind, I'm leaving. Yeah. You know, that's mm -hmm. it. I'm done. He said, you, sis. And I'm looking around. <laughs> Sister Von Attendo knew who he was talking about. Mother Bobby knew he was talking about so share, and I'm like this with my hand on my chest, and I'm like looking around, like who is he talking to? He said, "You, the one that's doing, <laughs> look like you're doing the pledge of allegiance." I was there at my chest. I was the only one. He said, "Yeah, you. I know you're Richardson." Mm -hmm. And I'm like, he said, "I appoint you the National Sisterhood Usher oh. President." 
And I'm like, okay, God. <laughs> you ain't going nowhere. That's what he said. That's what God was saying. Yeah. For pastor to look at me, I said, they told me, they said it was something about you. But bro, I'm going to have to go back to my childhood. When I got the Holy Ghost at the age of 15, I wanted to do uh, be an usher. But the sister at the church, she was an older mother. She was like, you're, you got the Holy Ghost, but you're, you're too young to hold an office. Wow. She said, so you're just going to be an usher. And I'm like, okay, when pastor appointed me that, it took me back to my childhood. And I said, okay, Lord. And do you know pastor made me say my name about three or four times? He was like, oh. what is your name? Go ahead, stand up, say your name. Say yeah. it. Like to say, I see what you're doing, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So I became the national president of the ushers in 2012. And to fast forward, I was still going and it was, you know, still struggling with things. And I would call pastor and thank God, you know, he was right there and his words of encouragement and wisdom, you know, and, and I'm like, Lord, how can I be the president of these people? And I'm just going through right now. I can't. And pastor would just keep, you know, pushing at me and the sisters and he, you know, and the sisterhood and, and everybody that I got through it. But in 2016, I lost my son, my autistic son, um, January the 8th of 2016. Um, and a week later, mom, Bobby Richardson, she passed away. So it was like, I don't know. At first, I was like, I'm okay. God's got me. He's got me. But then, once again, I went into a dark place. I held on. But I went to a dark place. And I and as I, I share my testimony with, with the sisters at the retreat and anybody, pastor is so true when he says, that you could be in church, but your mind isn't. Mm -hmm. You're you're there, mm -hmm. but you're somewhere else. And that's how I was. Mm -hmm. But I knew to hold on. And I was still calm. I was still trying to hold on, to lead the ushers. And I was still, you know, I said, if I could just hold on. And I could, I, I could hear, I hallelujah, I, I can hear pastors saying, just hold on. You know, don't give up. If just hold on, just just by a thread, just hold on. And I I held on. But I still was in a dark place because I was like, God, my baby, my Bobby, you know, because my Bobby was like a second mom to me. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just rough. So I was still in a dark place, but holding on. And the sisters around me and the brothers would greet me and everybody was just around me, rallying around me, holding on. And I thank God because I can truly say first church, when um, a member is going through something, them, the true saints of God mm -hmm. put their arms around you and they encourage you and they mm -hmm. don't leave your side. Mm -hmm. And the prayers, oh my God, the prayers work. And so... In 2020, um, tw in 2019, brother, I start feeling bad. I start getting sick mm -hmm. and I couldn't understand why. And um, I noticed my body, I had start losing weight. My stomach, I couldn't digest food. It was just a time in 2019 and so when 2021 came, 2019, 2020, when 2020 came and I still was feeling bad mm -hmm. and um, so they scheduled me for a CAT scan and everything at the end of the year. So, 
But before I could go in, I got COVID. Oh. Um, December of 20. I I um got COVID. And this was when there was no medicine and I was in a bad state. And um I didn't think I was gonna make it, but something in my soul said, you're gonna be okay. But bruh, in the midst of that COVID, I wasn't breathing. I didn't go to the emergency room, the hospital. I stayed home and I stuck it out. Um, God began to show me me hmm. because that's a part of my prayer. I always pray and ask God to show me my heart the way pastor told us. Show me my heart so that I can correct whatever's going on with me so I can be an example to someone else. Order my footsteps. Show me everybody around me mm -hmm. so that I will know who to connect with to stay in connect connection with you, Lord. Mm -hmm. So after he bought me from COVID, um, I got the CAT scan and the CAT scan showed that I had a mass in my stomach. Um, I told my children, I said, you know, when I was going through COVID, no one was here. I said, you know, I told them, I said, no one was here for me, you know, because they were, everybody was scared to come around or be around mm -hmm. um, because they didn't want it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, so I had to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. And I told them, I said, this year, um, 20, 2021, it's my year. I, it's me and God. My relationship with God is going to grow stronger. Kids, I love y'all, but I got to let y'all go. Y'all grown. Y'all grown. I got to let y'all go. It's my time. I have to live for God. I could have died. But God sees fit. I said, God is not finished with me yet. Mm -hmm. I said, I may be sick, but I said, God is not finished with me yet. I ain't going nowhere. My kids were crying. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm not going nowhere. He's not finished with me yet. Mm -hmm. So I went um, to a surgeon, went in to do a biopsy February the 5th of 2021. Complications from the biopsy. When I woke up, they had flown me to shock trauma, which is a university of Maryland. Um, a half, my coat, my, my small intestines was on the outside of my stomach. Um, bruh, if I get emotional, if I start praising God, don't, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, yes, of course. This, this, this platform, you can praise God all you want. Okay. Get emotional. Don't worry, sis. Don't it's worry. It's okay. I breathe. It was like somebody took like I've seen on television where the shock where they shock you mm -hmm. no one shocked me hallelujah thank you Lord Jesus hallelujah hallelujah it was nothing but God it was like somebody hit my chest and the wind and the in my breathing it was like wham like God said I'm not done with you yet Somebody just breath, just like somebody just said, wham. 
And um, I looked around and they informed me I had a trach. Um, I had tubes everywhere. They had me strip, um, um, tied to the bed because they said when people come out of comas and stuff like that, because I was in a coma, um, they said that they may pull their tubes and stuff out. So I looked, I looked, I remember looking around and, um, not knowing what was going on. I thought it was the day that I went in and they began to tell me they didn't think I was going to live. They say, you are a miracle. This is what they told me every day. You are a miracle. And I couldn't talk. And I couldn't say nothing to them. So they would ask me questions. I would have to shake my head. Um, but when I was in the coma, the coma state, I told Sister Janelle, I seen Sister Janelle and her little boy, Cash. And it was like, I, I don't know if I was drift off or what, but I was following them and she would tell me and she would tell Cash, tell Cousin Pat, come this way. And it was like, she was right there with me. And she was like my guardian angel that I, I can say that. Like they were my angels telling me, come on, you come this way. Mm -hmm. And when they would ask me questions, so finally when I came out of the coma, they were asking me all the questions. I shake my head. I want to tell the people of God the true state of surrendering. I was in such a dark place before, like I was still battling with me in the inside. I knew that I was going to stay with God. I knew I wasn't going nowhere. But before all this happened to me, it was like a process. Like God was saying, okay, enough, enough. I, 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 I really believe what happened to me, it had to happen to me. Some people may say, what? I believe it had to happen to me to bring me in my relationship closer to God the way it is now. And so um, one day, true surrendering, I learned that. They walked away from my bed and they had cut my oxygen off. I had a trait. That, that was my life. That was it. God, the breath that he had in me and the life support that he allowed them to use to keep me breathing. And um, I remember I was tugging the bed, trying to tell them, and they all, the ACE team, they had walked away from me. And it was just not even a split second. And I was like fighting, trying to tell these people, you cut my oxygen off. And one second, something says, stop. I stopped. And I said, I'm going to die and I'm okay. The minute I said that, thank you, Lord. It was like they had been walked away. This woman comes back and she says, oh my, she's woke. She's woke. What's wrong? She asked me what was wrong. And all I could do was tilt my head to show her you all cut my oxygen off. They said, she said, she's aware. She's aware because the questions they were asking me, they thought that I was not there, but mm -hmm. I was there. Mm -hmm. And they said, she, she's there. And she cut my oxygen on. The reason why I say it was a moment of surrendering, I was surrendering to the process. Mm -hmm. And I feel that at that moment when I said, okay, I'm done fighting. This is not helping. I'm going to die is the moment I learned what true, true surrendering is. And I, I don't, I hadn't shared, I hadn't shared that with too many people that that experience happened to me. And I understood. And because no one around me could hear me, but me and God, that's it. 
when I talked, no words came out. You couldn't hear me. I couldn't talk. I had a trait. He, so they couldn't hear you, but I, he could have, he could he could have hear, he could hear them. Even though you he couldn't could talk. Hear me. <laughs> he heard me, right? Oh, no. He heard me. So and he allowed my voice and my prayer to come to him to, and he connected with the people to come back. So I tell people that is my true meaning of surrendering. And in the process of me not being able to talk or hear, I still was in a bad state. They still didn't think I was going to make it. And um, they had prepared my family. I um, kept getting infections. Um, they couldn't find an antibiotic. My, um, if I may say, my intestines, is that okay, was on the outside. I lived with my intestines in a colostomy on the outside for a whole year. Um, burning was excruciating because it was acid. Mm -hmm. So they still, they had me in ICU and they brought me down. So I stepped down in ICU, still was on a lot of tubes. And my um, sister, Leslie Lake, um, who's that member of Del Mar, she came in and she, um, she came in my room because I was able to get visitors then. Because back then in COVID, you couldn't. It was one visitor per room per day. Yep. And um, I looked at her and I start beating on my phone and she was like, what do you want? And she was able to hear, to see me say, get in touch with pastor. Cause I still was in a bad state. I was in a bad state. I kept getting infections and I was having surgeries after surgeries daily. And she got in touch with Pastor, and it just so happened he answered. And um, the tears began to flow down my face, and and I was hitting the phone. I was telling him to hit the table, and she began to tell Pastor what was going on with me. He he had only got that Sister Patty was sick. He didn't know I was on my deathbed almost. He didn't know I was dying. I was literally, they had just was like, she's, there's no hope. You know, this is going to be a miracle. They said they were already saying I was a miracle because I came out of the coma, but they still were like, no, she's not going to get well. And I heard pastor say, what? I didn't know. And Leslie began to tell him what was going on with me. And Thank you, Lord Jesus, true man of God. The prayers of the saints were going on for me. And I thank God the prayers of the saints was going on because that was a part of my healing process. Pastor prayed for me over the phone. Once the man of God prayed for me, bro, every day, I start to heal and the people oh, yeah. would come in. Yes. The man of God prayed through the phone. So when people tell me that he's not an apostle, he's not a man of God, that God don't bring healing. He brought healing through that phone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Through Pastor Gino Genesis, he brought healing through that phone with the prayers of the saints. But that man of God, when he start praying, they would come in and they were like, we don't understand. And all I would do, I would do like this. I said, but God, I would say to myself, but God. And then one of the, the um, doctors, he, he, uh, he came in and he, I, I would say, but God, and the tears would roll down my face. I said, but God, he said, that's right. Nobody, but God. And Every day, um, they said, once they took the trach out, they said, oh, you're not going to have a voice. It's going to be husky. It's going to be rusty. It's not going to be the same. Give it time. Um, and the healing is, uh, it takes so many weeks for it to heal. And so I was like, okay, uh, I'm okay with that. Okay. So they took that out, bruh. Um, not too long after pastor prayed, I was in ICU probably maybe two or three more weeks after that. I was healing so fast. They couldn't believe it. 
that I went to a regular room. And um, but I still had to have my intestines and things like that. I had to live like that for a whole year, but it was just the process of healing. And even when I they said that they couldn't reconnect because my stomach was like mushing it inside, and the doctor wouldn't be able to tell. And I was like, okay, um, that's fine. And even when I would change my dressings and they would change the dresser, you could just see the thing sh just shrinking and, and just closing. Mm -hmm. I have pictures. I, sometimes I have to step back and look at the pictures to see how this hole that was like this shrink to something like that. Oh. And it was like, it, and every day I was seeing, I was like, it's closing. It's closing. I'm like, oh my God, this is nothing but God to see how the body operate. But I always say it was the prayer of the saints. But when the man of God prayed for me is when the healing. So this was March. They expected me to be in re, um, the hospital a long time. No. So March, February, March, April, um, I was able to be discharged, but I had to go back in because one of my, my lines got, I got an infection, but still, bro, even with that, God was still working and I couldn't have no visitors, but one a day, sometimes I didn't have visitors and it was just me and God. And in that process of it, the healing process I wanted people, I wanted to hear people, I wanted to see people, I did get calls, um, but it was nothing like, I just want, I was lonely. And then one day, she said to me, she said, you're not lonely. I said, yes, I am. She said, you got God. Once again, bruh, there I am. <laughs> like, Okay, this is what God wants. He is still trying to get my attention. Like, son, like, daughter, when are you going to realize that I'm here? Mm -hmm. You don't need nobody else. You don't need the sister. You need them, but you don't. I'm the one that can give you complete, complete peace. Yeah. I'm the one that can give you complete um, happiness. I'm the one that can complete you. I'm the one that molds you and make you and shape you and, mm -hmm. and, and do all of that to you. Listen to me. And at that moment, I said, okay, stop. Bruh, at first I can say to everybody that hears this, if Sister Patty hadn't died, I wouldn't have made it. I was going to hell because I was striving and I still was in a battle with my son's death. I was still going through anger and the, the griefing process to where I was in this dark place and, and things that I was striving to do, I hadn't done that. So Sister Patty, and I told the sisters, and this isn't part of my testimony, I wouldn't have been saved. And, and and you know, people be like, oh, you saying that? Yes, I'm saying that. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. We're all striving. And I don't mind sharing the testimony. If I had a died and God had a said, you know what? I'm taking you. I wouldn't have, I, I would have been lost. Oh. And in the midst of him Showing me all of this, I, you know, I would close every time I would close my eyes when I came out of the home zone back and back and forward because things are coming through my head. When I um had came out this comb and everything, and I realized I was like, I could have died and not came back. I would have been lost, and all this is going through my head. To where every time I closed my eyes, all I could see was the color of fire. Like there was, no, I, I was scared to close my eyes because I feel like in that period, I still had to ask for mercy. 
Ask God to forgive me. Ask God that he's allowed me this second chance to please show me that he's with me. Please show me that he's going to still be with me. And every time I would close my eyes and then I start praying and I start fighting. And one day I was able to ask pastor. I said, pastor, I'm, I'm on my sick bed. Basically, I'm on my deathbed. I could die. I said, can I still be saved? Because that's all I was thinking. Can I still be saved? And he said, word back to me. He said, yes, with God, all things are possible. Thank you, Lord. And when I got that, I held on to it. And I began to pray. And I just prayed and prayed. And eventually, when I closed my eyes one day, one night, I closed my eyes and I could see a bright light. Hallelujah. To hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. To hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was like somebody was bringing a flashlight close to me so the redness and the color of fire that I was seeing before God lifted that and he brought the light back to me and at that moment I began to say God I keep saying then pastors the man of God he God has shown me this through him and through the prayers of him and through the words of encouragement that I held, I held on to. So I tell people, whatever you're striving to do, don't keep saying you're going to strive to do it. Don't do that. Don't keep saying, I'm going to strive to do this and I'm going to strive to do this and think it's okay to let another day go by. We die daily. Fix it. Do it because I can truly say that if I hadn't opened my eyes, I would have been lost. I would have been lost. And that's what today still sees in my soul. And that I could have been lost, but I'm given another chance to get my soul right. And so I lived for a year. Um, I was in the hospital a total of seven months and two weeks, um, re including that included rehab. Um, and it wasn't until um, December, I mean, uh, February of 2022, um, I was able to be reconnected. Um, the doctor told me um, still prayer. Pastor sending word to me. They was praying for me. The saints of God sending word that they were praying for me. And um, the doctor told me, he said, you, um, your wound looks good. You heal great. And um, he told me, you're going to have to have a colostomy temporarily. Um, but I really don't thank me yet. I said, I thank God for you. And he said, don't thank me yet. Wait until afterwards. And um, still the prayers of the righteous was going up. I was scared because I've had so many surgeries um, in my body to where they said I, I possibly can't have any more surgeries on my stomach. That's a that's a no, no. I've had too many um, to correct what happened to me. And um, and I had um, so much um, antibiotics. I, I'm immune to a lot of antibiotics so it's like they have to figure out which one works for me if I ever get sick again so I went in for surgery and um came out of surgery I was scared to death let me back up a week a few days before my surgery I was um at uh, staying with a sister and um I was sitting in a chair it was late at night and my soul detached from my body. So I had an out-of-body experience. And um, it snatched me, whatever it was, snatched me from my ankles. Like it just snatched me. I was calling on Jesus. 
I said, Lord Jesus, and in the midst of this, this thing or this spirit wanted to throw me down the steps, like, like just was taking me to these tall staircase and just wanted to throw me down it. And I was calling walls like I was being pulled this way, one, one way and this way. It was out of body experience. And when I had that, um, I start saying, I was saying, Lord Jesus, I knew that I was detached from my body. I knew it. And there was nothing I could do, but I could hear myself saying, Lord Jesus, I was saying it. Finally, I felt like my body had, my body had reconnected and I heard myself saying, saying out loud, Lord Jesus. So I heard it and I said, oh, I start praying and I turned on pastor. I turned on a sermon and pastor wasn't preaching. He was saying, keep working on me, Lord. Keep working on me, Lord. And at that moment, I knew then, I said, I'm going to be okay. I said, I'm going to be okay. God is still using me. He's not, you're not done with me. He's saying, I'm not done with you, Sister Perry. You're not done. I'm still molding and shaping you. You still have a lesson to learn. And there's things that you still need to complete before you leave this life. If it's in his will for me to leave this life. And so he said, I still need you to me. This is what I feel the Lord was saying to me that I still need need you to trust in me my problem has always been if you know this from when I first got the Holy Ghost is trusting God knowing mm -hmm. that he's got me stop relying on this or that or these things he's got me so he still was taking me through this process that sister Patty I got you what are you gonna learn mm -hmm. what are you gonna think kid gonna learn <laughs> that I got you sir <laughs> and I'm like, okay, God, okay, 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 here we go again. I said, yes, Lord. So um, I thank God he still, thank you, Lord, because he still loves me. He's still putting up with me. Thank God for that. He still loves me. Um, but at the end of the day, um, I went through surgery and I came out of surgery. And when I came out of surgery, I knew that I was going to have a colostomy. I was in so much pain that Sister Leslie Lake came in and she was rejoicing. And I was like in pain and she was like, they got it all. And I'm like, what? They got it all. And I'm like, huh? And the doctor comes in and this is what the doctor told me. He said, when I opened you up, I seen clearly how to reconnect you back. I was in surgery for like eight or nine hours, mm -hmm. but he saw clearly how to reconnect me. And I said, that wasn't nothing but God, but God. That's all the whole time I was saying, but God, but God. And my doctor, I didn't realize that he believed in God. He may not be in our truth, mm -hmm. but he believed in God. And that was his thing. He even, he allowed Sister Leslie said she was rejoicing in the in the um, re, um, room when they told her I had made it through. She said he looked at her and looked at the people and said, she's all right. And it was, I, I, hallelujah. I know it was nothing but God because he said, you don't need it. You didn't need a colostomy because he was able to see. And that was God eyes showing him. I'll put you back together. So, um, bro, I still am going through battling with this, but God has yet to fail me. And I intend to live my life for him no matter what. I know the enemy hears me. I know trials and tribulations is going to come, but I know now that true meaning of that song too, learning how to lean and depend on Jesus. He's my friend. 
He's the all, he's my all. He's the, he's the creator of all. N nothing, when I need something done, I know now to go to God. I can ask for prayer. Um, pastor can pray for us. The, the sister and brothers can pray for me. But I also have to believe in my own prayer and knowing that God is going to work it out. And that's what I tell individuals. And let me tell you something. Who is it? Who is the one with the thorn in their flesh in the Bible? Um, is it Paul? Is it Paul? I'm not for sure. I I, I don't want to misquote it, but it's somebody who who has a thorn that had a thorn, and they still had it, and um and I feel that God has left me with that also. So whenever I feel myself slipping away and this is going to be the first time I ever say it out loud to a, a number of people who ever may watch it. I stopped breathing for a split second. You know how like um, it used to be frequently um, when I was coming through the healing process in the hospital, they couldn't find anything wrong with me. They, they test my breathing, nothing. They're like, we don't know where it's coming from. We don't know why. And every now and then, when I begin to lose sight or focus from God, I will just, <gasps> I'll do like this. And I've always told the people around me, even my kids, I they used to, it used to happen. Like if I look to the right or to the left, or I didn't stay focused on the word, or I start thinking doubtful things, mm -hmm. I stop breathing. I believe, and Lord forgive me if I'm wrong, if it's not you, but I believe it keeps me in check. Every now and then I'll, and it's to me, it's my reminder that I hold life and death in my hand. Mm -hmm. I can take your breath at any second. And when that happens, it's like a fear that fear comes back to me. Like, Lord, I don't want to lose you. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. It brings me back to that period of surrendering and submissive. It brings me back to that humble state. So my thing is I'm still going through but God continues to bless me. He continues to heal me. Um, he, and that is my testimony that set to God is true and real. He's real. Don't take life for granted. Be obedient to the word. Yes. We're going to fall short. Yes, we, we're striving. We're striving. Like I say, even today, I'm still not perfect, but sometimes I have to shape myself mm -hmm. because I've been on that deathbed. I've mm -hmm. been there. And sometimes I have to shake myself and be like, oh, oh come on back. Mm -hmm. Especially when I stop for that second, I'll, when I go like that, I'll just be talking to someone in mid sentence. And in my, you know, the people that's been around me, they can tell mm -hmm. you what happens. And they look at me, you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. I, I know I know who it is. It's, I know who it is. Don't worry about it. So that is my encouragement to people to don't take life for granted. When you're walking in the truth, give it your 100%. Yeah. Don't look to the left, the right, behind you. Stay focused on God, no matter who it is. Even when it comes to my children, um, I, I let them go. I let family members go. And bro, let me tell you, I learned who was for me and who was against me when I was laying on my bed mm -hmm. of infection, when I was sick. Was it hard? There was people that I saw that was in my life that was not supposed to be in my life. They, I just carried them on and they were a hindrance to me and they were bringing me down. I have learned how to totally, completely allow God to lead me and guide me. I have learned that man fails you, but God never fails you. No matter what you're going through, I know times may get rough. And it may get hard and we all have different paths and different walks. Some are stronger in certain areas than others. But the, the, the main thing is, is that you keep your eye on God and listen to the word of God. Don't just 
not. And that's another thing, bro. Before I told people that I was, I was, I would hear pastor, but it was like, I really didn't hear him until all this happened to me. And some of the stuff that was taught years ago to me, even when I was sitting underneath for the truth, whole truth, first church, I was there listening not listening. I was just listening then at the moment. But now when I hear him, I understand. I hear him digesting the word. I hear God speaking through him. And I know, I know for sure it is God. And I can hear and I understand. I understand what he's saying. Because through my testimony and what I've been through, it's like, wow. Because, bruh, I, I, there is some parts of my story I haven't shared, you know, I, I was abused. I was physically, mentally, and emotionally abused growing up. It was just things that I went through mm -hmm. and, um, I really feel God has taken this broken soul and he has mended it and brought me back to a state of submission to him. And bruh, I don't want to. I don't want to die without him. I don't want to be lost. I want to be saved. So I'm running. My song is I'm working on me, Lord, and I'm going to continue to work on me. And that's, that's all I got. I, I, I can't say enough about God. And, um, that's a part of, that's a part of my testimony that God is real. And no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, just trust him. And that is the biggest part of my life that I was not getting to trust him and lean on him and allow him to order my footsteps. And I didn't get it until he quieted me in that hospital bed where no one could hear me, but him. He showed me me. He showed me everything around me and he showed me what I needed to do. And I thank God. That's my testimony. Oh, wow. 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 I'm and sorry wow. if I rambled on, but that's my wow. testimony. My dear. All I can say is to folks, happy, happy new year. Eh? <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. You know what? what's so beautiful about this testimony? Because I was just reminiscing on something you said. Because none of us, you know, we deserve his mercy, nothing like that or anything, right? Yeah. God can cut us off at any moment in time in our good health. It's the fact that here you are on your deathbed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You knew that you weren't ready to go. Mm -hmm. God knew. Hallelujah. You were ready to, God knew hallelujah. you were ready to go. Hallelujah. 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 And here it is. It's not that you're walking and just for, you're you're literally no. on your deathbed. Death Doctors, people who've studied. Eight years, ten years, all these years, telling you, nah, there's, 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 there's no way. There's no way. You know, I, 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 Lord, I don't even want to have a feeling like that where it's, you know, and you know he knows, of course, you're not ready, mm -hmm. but he's, he's still, he still had mercy on you. Yes. You, 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 you can't. Yes. Just hear something had like mercy. that. Still have it's, mercy. It's, it's un unbelievable. Still have mercy. Like still have like, mercy. Those of you watching, that, pay attention to that. On the deathbed, he still had mercy. She knew, as you stated, you knew. Because some still. of us, we would try to lie it out. Oh, I, I, I know, I'm ready. You know, I'm. I, but you, you knew. Knew. Here it is. I knew. That's that's you know that gives me his mercy and grace is real. Dude, that's, it's that's real. It's real. You know you. I just thank him. I just. I I can't. I, that, that that's gonna that's probably gonna be in my mind forever. Just the fact, like, that's on your deathbed. Well, I was dead. Yes. <laughs> yes. He put breath back in my body. And when I recognized and came to myself, I realized I've been in a crisis. And I still was scared that he was going to take me. But I was like, okay, there's nothing I can do. 
There's nothing. There's nothing you can do but just, you know? Surrender. But it was his grace. Oh, yes. Just surrender. It was his grace. All I could just ask for mercy. No one heard me but him. And and that's another thing too. You couldn't talk. Gloria. I couldn't talk. I couldn't talk. You couldn't talk. I couldn't but talk. He still heard you. He heard me. Yes, Tell me, Hallelujah! To Hallelujah, bro! Hallelujah! To Hallelujah! To Hallelujah! To Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord Jesus! Hallelujah! To Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord Jesus! To Hallelujah! To Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! This, this, yes, yes, this brothers yes, and sisters, yes, I'm yes, telling you. Yes, you. And and for me, my yes, days, the yes. Lord knows as I say this, I never had doubts that the man yes. of God was sent by God. But when a man, it's it's just something when a man of God prays for you, and to know that healing was over the phone, over the phone, over the. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, yes, these, over these the phone, like and the healing just came. It just boom, 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 boom. Somebody even said, "Well, you don't think that people pray for you? The people of God was didn't pray for you. It wasn't their prayers." I said, "No, I'm not saying that. The people of God prayers help." I said, "But the the magnitude of the healing did not come until Pastor prayed. It was like God was showing me again: this man is real." He wanted the people around me that was saying, told me for years he's not real mm -hmm. to show that this man is real. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can't nobody tell me. Yeah. Nobody it's, can tell me. I thank God. No, it's truly, it's it's a blessing, yeah. sis. I yes. mean, to, to hear all that you, you've you been through. You know, I used to hear when people say, you know, my son yes. you know, passed on and so forth. And of course, you know, you, you feel something, right? Like, ah, man, but it's mm -hmm. now having a son of my own. It's like a, a complete different hit mm -hmm. when I hear that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I I just, I could not. I would never, ever want to lose a child. Mm -hmm. And to lose that child, it you know, it takes people years, brothers mm -hmm. and sisters, for someone to grieve. But uh -huh. now you had to go through another death the week after. Mm -hmm. Then you get sick. Mm -hmm. literally on a deathbed with the mm -hmm. that's with the knowledge I'm not ready <laughs> yes. no I'm not, and and it goes back into the teaching you know from the apostle we have to be clothed in humility you have to you have to be because mm -hmm. you could have just been ah come on I'm sister patty like head of yeah. ushers and come on now the lord lord mm -hmm. jesus you, mm -hmm. you know but you knew and mm -hmm. with your cloth of humility in one of the worst, probably the worst moment you've been in, where yes. you have knowledge of it, and you know he does, he still had mercy. And the best part about it, we don't we don't even deserve it. No, no. And that's what fascinates every day. I thank him for his grace and mercy. Cause he didn't have to do that. He didn't, but he did. He's not, I said. Thank you, Lord. Not finished with me yet. I still got things I got to get right before I meet my maker. And that's what I'm striving to do. And you've I'm said it. You've, to do you've said it so, so plain, right? Just for those, get what you need to get done. Like get whatever. Done. Stop. Stop. Not to say happily, but comfortably struggling. Because sometimes we comfortably struggle with stuff, you know, <laughs> like, oh, you know what? And it's not a sin, but I'm just giving an example now. I don't mm -hmm. sin. But man, I'm struggling with, you know, brushing my beard and stuff. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm in this way. I'm young. You know what I'm saying? I'm chilling. Mm -hmm. And then just in an instant, something happens. And all, like all, all of a sudden now, it's like, shoot. I should have. What's, mm -hmm. what's going on? You know, we mm -hmm. have to really mm -hmm. press on. But, of course, we take our time. You know, the it mm -hmm. won't come overnight. But if we're doing the best that we can as you said you got to give you a hundred percent even though it's going to be making us do things we're not used to doing what do you mean two in the morning you can't go to bed bro get on your knees exactly you, you exactly. oh but i'm not i'm not used to doing that bro like you know fall asleep exactly. i try to scroll on my phone hit those knees 
Hmm? Well, brother Sandin, you know, I, I'm kind of like, I'm still young in truth. I'm living at home and stuff. It's quiet. Don't worry. You you, you could be quiet. God God knows why you're being quiet. But he still, exactly. hears, it. He still hears it so loudly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And and I know that to be true because I couldn't talk. You couldn't so talk? I couldn't, I couldn't talk, but I could call on God in my head. He knew. He heard me. We, we should, and that's that's another thing. As he heard you, and that's where the script where PJ preached, you know, pray for the physicians. The fact that now they're able to connect to see what's going on with you. Mm -hmm. You know, whoever was going to perform surgery on you, able to tell you, man, we didn't have to give you the colonoscopy. Like, it just, I know exactly how to, only God mm -hmm. can do those things. Yes. Mm -hmm. For someone mm -hmm. to say, I know, it, it's like you go to a person for like a, a oh, for business or whatever, and they tell you, I know exactly what you need. You're going to make, you're going to be very successful. That's right. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Oh, this, 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 what your, <laughs> what your testimony says is grace. It's mercy, mm -hmm. but it's also something to really keep in memory. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, and remember, we're going back to what you said. Remember, you said you kept this much. That much. That, that You didn't don't... have a lot to keep. <laughs> no. That but much. You still kept... It's like when uh, PJ also, when he mentioned, there's stuff that you could be praying for or ways that you can be years later. And now mm -hmm. it's, it's answered today. Yes. Answered five years. The answer that you yes. still kept that little faith because in yes. your situation, sis, you know, and to be plain, a lot of people would have just been done with life. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about like done with life, come to the to the fullest mm -hmm. doubt. Come because you can't you can't even have a little bit of tiny bit doubt in mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. that would have come upon some folks, and the yes. fact that despite. You know, not only you were in this way, but you were in a dark place. Thank, thank you for your your humility in this testimony, sis. Because a lot of times, and once again, people they hear the cha cha. It's, it's all nice, but you admit it. I was in a dark place yes. because sometimes people will skip those parts, and now people are wondering, okay, how did she? No, nah, she was in a dark place. Mm -hmm. But despite mm -hmm. being in that dark place. And it's not encouraging you all. Oh, yeah, don't worry. I could be in a dark place too. No. No, no. But regardless of what it is you're going through or what you're going to go through, mm -hmm. just, just remember this. Hold on. Just, 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 just this. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, aye, Lord. Aye, aye. That just, ooh, oh. that just says, because I know, I know. Just hold on. Just, just hold, hold on. on. I just know. On. I know. I know. <laughs> oh, God. Well, <laughs> you know, sis, uh, I, I always ask, this question, you know, at the end, when you look around and see all that the Lord has done for thee, how grateful are you to God for Apostle Pastor Gino Jennings? Um, I, words cannot express how grateful I am to be sitting under a man of God. It is the most um, humbling experience that I could ever have in my life but yet it's the most joyful feeling that I could ever have in my life to know that I have a leader teacher and guy that is speaking truth that has God on his side that allow God to use him and who is so humble and um I I can't express I just truly just thank God for him. And I pray and I ask God that I be obedient to the words that come out of his mouth um, so that I won't be a stress on him, but a help towards the work of the Lord that he is trying to do. So that is my prayer and that God will continue to strengthen him and just um, lead him and guide him um, continually wherever he go, that God, that the words that will continue to come out of his mouth to bring people to God. Wonderful. Wonderful. And just, you know, a last message, what message would you have someone watching this right now? Cause you know, I've had some that come up to me, bro. I watch podcasts and I'm, I remember I, I was so down watching it and it encouraged me and all this and stuff like that. I'll turn on to the word of God. It'd be, you know, I, I've been so down lately. So keep me in prayer, bro. Keep me in. So one watching this right now, 
because nobody could ever say you don't understand. No, nobody could. Nobody could tell you that. No, 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 no. No one could tell you that. Somebody, I'm talking about the struggling sis. Somebody right now could probably just be on the edge of just simply backsliding. Just, just they're just they're in a dark place right now. In a Whether dark it's place. Son, son, daughter, father, uncle, mom. What what would you tell them right now if they're watching? What I would tell them is to foremost, what I said before, hold on. You know, even if they are to come to church and you don't have no testimony, you don't have words to say, sit there. Just being there, God hears that. God sees that. And to I always tell people, do not look at others. Do not... um listen to um everything that they hear or see just stay focused on god just try to stay in that word stay with the um no you know no matter what they're going through God is there. He may not seem, it may not seem that he's not there, but he is there and he's listening. And every teardrop, because I know this to be true, and this is what I'm going to say. I was geared to go somewhere else, but this is what's coming to my mind. Even through them teardrops, that is prayers. God hears that. Even if you don't have a word to say, but God sees that tears, tears are prayers. And just, just keep, keep, know that God, he's not going to, bro, I have so much that's coming to mind is um, when I was in my dark place, um, although people were sharing things with me and like you just asked me, I, I was listening, but then it took my situation of what happened to me to realize that God was there. And I don't want nothing to, to stream of what happened to me. I know some people may face different things, but just trust God. Do not turn away from God. Just trust him. He's got you. It may not seem like he's there, but he is there. He just needs you to know that he got you. Let go and let God. Let go. Let go. Just let go. Fall on your knees. Just let go. Because there's times that I just pray. I don't pray out of my mouth. I pray with my tears. And I just lift my hands and I say, God, you take it. And the burden will be, it will become light. It will get lighter and lighter. It's just trusting in God. Just trusting in God. That's all I got. Wonderful. I know I went to two or three different directions, no, but I no, just... it's it's you went the direction you just God wanted you to go. You know, it's 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 a blessing, you know, to hear wise it's not advice. Easy. No, no, it's not, kind of it's not easy, and I don't want nobody to think it is. This road is it's not easy, but if we stay focused on God and not look to the left or the right or behind us or what other people is doing. Your relationship is between you and God, not nobody else. Your relationship is it. Everybody relationship is going to be different because all of us are different levels. But as long as we're fighting that good fight of faith and that same fight to meet God at the end, mm -hmm. you're going to be okay. Wonderful. That's No, that's true. Yeah. And to say this, <clears throat> There was a you know family friend that we knew. Um, she went to go check her call in. I believe twenty twenty two, if I'm correct. The doctor said, you know, everything everything is cool. I guess when you get to a certain age, you know, they recommend, uh, especially like black women in particular, to check your call in for any yes. you know cancerous and stuff. They said everything was fine. Mm -hmm. And um, I was at my it was my aunt's burial. And something I just kept on hearing. Somebody else is going to die. Somebody else. Somebody else. You know, they're not going to get there. Somebody else. And my aunt was one of the ones I presented this teaching to that, you know, 
she refused it and God cut her off. Yeah. This other woman as well was one that I present. I just presented it because if those that knew who I was, if someone's presenting you something like this, you know, you would consider. They did it. She checked her call in the year before. Perfectly fine. The very next year, she got calling cancer. Mm -hmm. It wasn't years later. What it, God cut her off, and like it was so quick. So that's why when I when I heard your testimony, mm -hmm. there's there's I'm I'm telling you, it's to see how, because clearly you were just it was done with, mm -hmm. and every it's like every week we kept on getting a call. Okay, she's at the stage four. It's bad. Next week, the foot are swelled up. The week after, she's not talking. She can't talk. The week after, she's in a hospice. The week next, she's gone. Oh, and I'm like, and, and and I presented this to her years ago. It wasn't like I just did. Mm -hmm. It was probably like four or five years ago. I said, hey, we're going to be in your area. Come out and just, oh, no, I have my church and I have this. And, you know, four or five years ago, so she had an opportunity. And so to hear your testimony, how God, you even acknowledge. Here's one. Now it's like gone to a crisis grave. Mm -hmm. But here's for yourself, even though you, because people, people get it twisted. They think, oh, no, we're in holiness, you know, baptizing oh, no. in the name of Jesus Christ. Have the Holy Ghost speaking until we're guaranteed. Oh, we're guaranteed to make the first resurrection. It's not that, brothers and sisters. Here's one baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost filled, pressing on this way. Mm -hmm. And despite her, though she was at the deathbed, she knew. Nah, I'm, I knew. I'm, I'm not ready. You, you, you didn't even think you were. You knew. So knew. to hear your testimony, sis, like you, you just, you, you encouraged me so much. You know, I know sometimes people can't tell, but at times your brother goes through trying times. You know, your brother, but just to hear your testimony, you know, it just encourages me more over. Well, just, I appreciate that, bro. Man. Just hold on. No, it's, just, it's, hold just, on. just hold on. Just hold on. Oh, yeah, but your I testimony appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I humbly say, just continue <laughs> to pray for me because, you know, we got to keep each other lifted up in prayer because you know we're still striving you know absolutely yeah oh, thank but you, I, I, I appreciate and i pray that it does it helps someone else mm -hmm. along the way um but just i humbly say just could keep praying for me wonderful, wonderful. well sis, thank you very much you're welcome for taking the time and coming out and sharing your testimony like you're i tell welcome. folks if if only so many of you could know how these testimonies encourage yes. us. Yes. Yes. I watched them. Yes. And and now yes. and now here you're about to be the one. <laughs> Listen, I, I just I, I'm I'm ready here. I'm gonna I know Sunday's gonna come to service. The brothers, <laughs> brother, especially one one brother, one African brother, brother, that testimony with that sister, man. <laughs> I, 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 I cannot say I cannot complain, man. I don't know what to say no more, man. Because it's just people start to just, oh, I'm going through this. I'm not realizing what some was going through, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? And so I'm truly, and not just, you know, here, Canada, US, but you have saints from all over that's watching this. So now it's like a saint that never met you, never even knew you, but my days are still my sister. You know, mm -hmm. she was going mm -hmm. through this and here it is. Um, this is what I'm complaining about. Come mm -hmm. on, get it together. You know, so mm -hmm. sis, thank you very much. You're welcome. So Thank you, you for having you, me. It's gonna. I'm telling you, it already. This thing is already going to encourage so many. So I truly am grateful that You're you welcome. came out, um, and shared your testimony. Mm -hmm. Those of you, you know, you have your testimony. If you're ready and willing, come out and share it. You know how to reach to me: email, Instagram, yes. Facebook, whatever. Come out, brothers and sisters. But sis, oh, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for, thank for you. honestly coming mm -hmm. on. Um, thank you we're gonna definitely keep pray for me in prayer. Oh, no, for sure. thank you definitely gonna keep me in prayer you know that god continues to strengthen your mind strengthen yes. your heart that you yes. continue in this way and hold on to god's unchanging hand thank you very much for tuning in mm -hmm. brothers and sisters those of you watching yes. and those of you that not in the church that watch as well because you have you know sinners that watch this as well mm -hmm. you know thank mm -hmm. you for tuning in I hope this encourages you 
uh, uh, to even just come along and hop on this Truth of God train. But that being said, thank you for all for listening. It's your brother, son, and it's been us. As some of you may know me as the podcast man, God bless and peace be unto you.